Good afternoon, my dear students, the students of grade four. This is the first video on Ramadan, and uh, I want to say happy Ramadan. And uh, I want you to uh, keep focusing on the learning process because we are asked to continue uh, our lessons throughout this week and the next week. So let's start with the comprehension scale of today, which is sequence. Sequence is the order in which events uh, events of the story happen. Uh, like how, like I told you before, you guys, that uh, the story starts with the uh, exposition, which is the setting of the story. Setting of the story means where and when. And then we go to the rising action, going to the climax, and then the folding action, and finally the end of the story. Uh, the sequence of the story, you will figure it out uh, during reading the story itself. When you find words or clue words like, for example, first, like before, like after, all these clue words figure out or signal the sequence. All these um, words uh, are highlighting the sequence of the story. So when I say the sequence of a story, it means the beginning of the story. Then you go to the rising action, then the climax of the story, then the falling action, and finally the end of the story. This is what I mean by the sequence of the story. Any sequence in your life, it means the order of uh, events or order of things. So sequence, it means order of things or order of events. The order of events uh, of the story, you will find it out during your reading of the story and uh, you will find words like uh, like first, like before, like after that, like next, all these uh, words are telling you about the sequence of the story. So this is about the comprehension skill of today. Uh, the part in here, Dare to Dream, on page 385, I want you to read it because we have no time today to read that. I, I don't want the video to be uh, more than 15 minutes. So read this part, Dare to Dream, and then we're going to read uh, this part together in the online session. Uh, if you turn over the, the page, you will find uh, some new vocabulary. Let's check them together. Uh, listen to the first one and repeat. Colonel. Uh, colonel. Colonel, it means what? Uh, I have prepared in here. Yes. Colonel, it means a military rank below general. So a military rank. A military rank like how teacher, like in this picture in here. If you look in here, yes, this is a colonel. A colonel, he is a military rank. A military rank. Someone who works in the, in the army or someone who is in the army. That's a colonel, okay? The next one. Lurking. Lurking. What is lurking? Check the flashcard first for lurking and try to guess the meaning. It's the meaning of lurking. Look at the picture carefully. Yeah, let's check now the uh, definition of the word. Lurking, it means hiding. So lurking, it means hiding or moving about in a secret and sly manner. Okay, let's go back again to lurking, which is hiding in here. Yeah, lurking, it means hiding. It means hiding. Let's go back to the third one. Palettes. Palettes. What is palettes? Check the flashcard. Maybe you will find it. Yeah, this is the meaning of palettes. Huh? Do you know it? Okay, check the definition. Palettes, it means a thin boards, usually oval or oblong with a thumb hole at one end used by painters to lay and mix colors on. So this is the palettes. Yeah, if we go back again to the picture, you will find that this is the palettes. This one, the wooden one in here. The one that is made of wood. This one in here. Yes. This is the palette. So the palette, something that is made of wood, like this. Okay. So this is the palette. Let's go back again. The next one. Affords. Afford. Afford. If you check the flashcard, you will find the afford. Like this one, for example. Look at the guys in here, they are holding uh, chocolate or a kind of sweet 
and this guy is holding uh, one dollar I think that this is one dollar in his right hand so a Ford it means what in the definition you would find that a Ford it means gives us an uh, effect or a result provides or yields so we can say that a Ford it means gives or provides like this guy in here the guy in here he can afford it he can afford the suite in here it means he can give the money or he can uh, provide the seller by uh, giving him the money okay so this is the meaning of afford can you afford that like for example this is with five dollars the, the boy in here has only one dollar so he can't afford it he cannot afford it if he can afford it it means he has the same amount of money that the seller is asking for so this is the meaning of afford the next one glint glint what does it mean the word glint if you look at the flashcard you'll find that this is glint yeah but can you understand from this picture what does the meaning of glint in here in the definition you will find that glint it means a gleam or a flash yes it's a flash so go back again to the um, flashcard glint it means like this one in here flash yeah this one flash so a glint it means flash the next one quaint quaint what is quaint look at the flashcard yeah this one quaint what does it mean quaint in the definitions you will find that quaint it means strange or odd in an interesting pleasing or amusing way so it's something like strange or odd something that is strange or odd in an interesting pleasing pleasing or amusing way so this is the meaning of quaint strange or odd something is strange like this one in here this is strange so the next one is and the last one resemblance 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 if you look in here in the flashcard first resemblance it means yeah look at the picture of the two birds yeah resemblance here it means what if I ask you, do the two birds in here uh, have any kind of resemblance? Do they have uh, any kind of resemblance? Okay, resemblance, it means similar appearance or likeness. So it means a similar appearance. If you look in here again, yeah, to the two birds, do they have any similar appearance? No, teacher, this one in here has got green wings but this one is having yellow wings so they don't have any resemblance okay what about the head itself this one is has got is having in here um, black hair on his head but this one is having orange hair on his head so no resemblance in here resemblance it means likeness or um, similar appearance okay this was the last one the, the last one in the vocabulary okay and this part on page 387 will tell you about the vocabulary again but I want to take you to the story directly to the story uh, by turning over the page uh, this story is about how Tia Lola came to stay not to visit how Tia Lola came to stay not to visit uh, this story, the genre, the genre, this story is realistic fiction. Realistic fiction, it means it's made up, but the uh, characters and events are so lifelike. What does it mean, are so lifelike? It means that the events of the story seem like, as if they are, uh, as if they are um, true, as if they are true. So realistic fiction, it means something that is made up, but, but the characters and the events are like uh, seems like they are true seems seems like they are true this is the genre of this story so when i say a realistic faction story you have to know that it seems like it's a true it seems like it's a true 
the end of the page uh, I'm gonna let you listen to all the story and we are gonna discuss it in the online session uh, this story is, is full of a lot of Spanish words so keep focusing guys and try to figure out the plot of the story it talks about what and we will discuss all that together in the online session tomorrow okay listen to the story Miguel and Juanita have moved to a rented farmhouse in Vermont with their mother, Mami. Their father, an artist, has stayed in New York. Tia Lola, Mami's aunt from the Dominican Republic, has come to visit. But some of the ideas she has brought along are a little different, and not always to the liking of Miguel or the family's landlord, Colonel Chaubois. The long, sweet, sunny days of summer come one after another after another. Each one is like a piece of fancy candy in a golden blue wrapper. Most nights, now that school is out, the Alola tells stories, sometimes until very late. The uncle, who fell in love with a Siwapa and never married. The beautiful cousin, who never cut her hair and carried it around in a wheelbarrow. The grandfather, whose eyes turned blue when he saw his first grandchild. Some nights, for a break, they explore the old house. In the attic, behind their own boxes, they find dusty trunks full of yellowing letters and photographs. Miguel discovers several faded photos of a group of boys all lined up in old-fashioned baseball uniforms. Except for the funny caps and knickers and knee socks, the boys in the photos could be any of the boys on Miguel's team. One photo of a boy with a baseball glove in his hand is inscribed Charlebois 34. Miguel tries to imagine the grouchy old man at Rudy's restaurant as the young boy with the friendly smile in the photograph. But he can't see even a faint resemblance. Since the team doesn't have a good place for daily practice, Miguel's mother suggests they use the back pasture behind the house. But let me write Colonel Chaubois first, just in case. Their landlord lives in a big white house in the center of town. He has already written them once this summer, complaining about the unseemly shape of the vegetation after Tia Lola trimmed the hedges in front of the house in the shapes of pineapples and parrots and palm trees. Can't you just call him and ask him, Mommy? Miguel asks. After all, the team is impatient to get started with practice. A letter will take several days to be answered. You try calling him, Miguel's mother says, holding out the phone. Miguel dials the number his mother reads from a card tacked on the kitchen bulletin board. The phone rings once, twice. A machine clicks on, and a cranky old voice speaks up. This is Colonel Charles Chaubois. I can't be bothered coming to the phone every time it rings. If you have a message, you can write me at 27 Main Street, Middlebury, Vermont, 05753. Let's write that letter, shall we? Mommy says, taking the phone back from Miguel. Two days later, Colonel Chaubois' answer is in their mailbox. It has not been postmarked. He must have driven out and delivered it himself. I would be honored to have the team practice in my back pasture. He replies in a shaky hand, as if he'd written the letter while riding in a car over a bumpy road. Honored, Miguel's mother says, lifting her eyebrows. She translates the letter for Tia Lola, who merely nods, as if she'd known all along that Colonel Charbois is really a nice man. And so, every day, Miguel's friends come over, and the team plays ball in the back field, where only six months ago, Miguel, or maybe it was the Siguapas, wrote a great big welcome to Tia Lola. Twice a week, Rudy drops by to coach. They play all afternoon, and afterward, when they are hot and sweaty, Tia Lola invites them inside for cool, refreshing smoothies, which she calls frío fríos. As they slurp and lick, 
She practices her English by telling them wonderful stories about Dominican baseball players like Sammy Sosa and the Alu brothers and Juan Marichal and Pedro and Ramon Martinez. The way she tells the stories, it's as if she knows these players personally. Miguel and his friends are enthralled. After a couple of weeks of practice, the team votes to make Miguel the captain. Jose, who is visiting from New York, substitutes for whoever is missing that day. Tia Lola is named manager. ¿Y qué es el manager? Tia Lola wants to know what a manager does. A manager makes us frío fríos. Captain Miguel says, every day after practice, there are frío fríos in a tall pitcher in the icebox. It is a happy summer until Tia Lola decides to paint the house purple. Miguel and his friends have been playing ball in the backfield, their view of the house shielded by the ample trees. As they walk back from practice, they look up. Holy cow! Miguel cries out. The front porch is the color of a bright bruise. Miguel can't help thinking of the deep, rich purple whose name he recently learned from his father in New York. Dioxazine, he mutters to himself. The rest of the house is still the same color as almost every other house in town. Regulation white, Papi calls it whenever he comes up to visit and drives through town. In her high heels, in a dress with flowers whose petals match the color of the porch, stands Tia Lola, painting broad purple strokes. For a brief second, Miguel feels a flash of that old embarrassment he used to feel about his crazy aunt. Awesome, his friend Dean is saying. Cool, Sam agrees. Que cool, Jose echoes. They wave at Tia Lola, who waves back. Frio Frios, she calls out. Today she has chosen grape flavor in honor of the new color of the house. By the time Miguel's mother comes home from work, he and his friends look like they have helped Tia Lola paint the house. Their mouths are purple smudges. When they open their mouths to say hello, their tongues are pinkish purple. Okay, what is going on? Mommy asks, glancing from Miguel to Tia Lola. She looks as if she's about to cry, something she has not done in a long time. Tia Lola speaks up. Don't the colors remind her of the island? La casita de tu niñez, the house where Mommy spent her childhood. Miguel can see his mother's face softening. Her eyes have a faraway look. Suddenly, Mommy is shaking her head and trying not to laugh. Colonel Chaubois is going to throw a fit. Actually, he's going to throw us out. El Coronel? No hay problema. Tia Lola says, pointing to herself and Miguel and his friends. Miguel's mother looks from face to face as if she doesn't understand. Miguel and his friends nod as if they understand exactly what Tia Lola is up to. The next afternoon, when Miguel's friends come inside from practice, Tia Lola takes their measurements. She has bought fabric with the money the team has collected and is making them their uniforms. When it is Miguel's turn, he stands next to the mark that his mother made on the door frame back in January. He is already an inch taller. Tia Lola, what are you up to? The team keeps asking. Are we going to lose our playing field if Colonel Charbois takes back his house? No hay problema, Tia Lola keeps saying. Her mouth curls up like a fish hook that has caught a big smile. Are you going to work magic on him? Miguel asks his aunt that night. The magic of understanding, Tia Lola says, winking. She can look into a face and see straight to the heart. Okay guys, we will stop till this part because it will take much more time if we read uh, till the rest of the story. We're going to read all that together in the online session. Hope you understand today. See you on the online session tomorrow. Goodbye.